which firefighting foams are actually allowed and which are banned. This video is about limit values of PFAS in firefighting foams. Before we start, you need to know that I'm talking about the situation in the European Union, because most of it is EU law. But because these laws often have their roots in international agreements, like the Stockholm Convention, it might also be applicable to some countries outside the EU. When regulators restrict fluorinated foams, they don't just ban these foams, such as AFFF, at least not yet. More likely, they ban certain chemicals that can be found in firefighting foams and other products. For example, PFOS or PFOA. And they don't completely ban them, they regulate them. They introduce a limit value. But practically, this means a ban on firefighting foams containing these chemicals. Two substances are currently regulated, PFOS and PFOA. A PFOS ban was first introduced in 2006 in the EU, and the limit value was lowered in 2010. Now it is 10 ppm. PFOS-based foams are not produced anywhere in the world anymore, but you may find old stocks of foaming agents that contain PFOS. PFOA was first regulated in 2017, and the regulation was tightened in 2020. It is a bit complicated, and that's why I'd like to take a closer look at it. I will link the regulation and an explaining document in the description. The first question to ask yourself is, does the foam contain more than 25 ppb of PFOA? Only a laboratory analysis can determine this definitely. If the content is lower than 25 ppb, you do not have a problem. If it is higher, it gets complicated. The next question is, for what do you use the firefighting foam? The use for fires of combustibles, class A fires, is prohibited. But that is not a problem because the use of AFFF for class A fires doesn't make much sense anyway. If it is used for class B fires, the following rules apply. Manufacturing and sale is prohibited, but that also doesn't matter because the foam manufacturers had to adjust to this with the regulation from 2017. And they have fluorine-based as well as fluorine-free foams on offer that comply with the limit value. Forming agents in fire engines and extinguishing systems may be used until end of 2022. After that, until July 4th, 2025, it can only be used if all releases can be contained. After that, use is no longer possible if the foam contains more than 25 ppb of PFOA. Storage with end users, like fire departments, is permitted until July 4th, 2025, provided you are complying with the restrictions on use. Firefighting foam that does not meet the limit value shall not be used for training of personnel since July 4th, 2020. System tests, for example tests of extinguishing systems, are allowed until July 4th, 2025, but only if all releases are contained. So, what should you do if your firefighting foam exceeds the PFOA limit? There are basically two options. First option, the transition to a PFAS-based foam that complies with the limit value for PFOA. That is possible. There are still fluorine-containing foams, AFFFs and others, that nevertheless comply with the limit value for PFOA. The disadvantage of this solution is that it is not very sustainable. Environmental authorities are already looking at other PFAS, and it is very likely that all AFFFs will be banned. I already made a video on this that I will link. It can therefore make sense to use this opportunity and switch to fluorine-free foam straight away. Of course, you need to assess whether the hazards you're facing allow that change. But if so, now is a good time to transition to fluorine-free foam.